wrap things up with the third and final installment of the pack, the award-winning Journey. The 18-person development team for Journey was composed mainly of the creators of the company's other games. Co-founder Genova Chen was the creative director. Due to Sony's extremely short limit on the game to be completed, which was a year, the development team ended up in several arguments about the design of the game. Journey wasn't completed until three years later, causing the company to go nearly bankrupt, which was later admitted by Chen at the 2013 DICE Awards. The game was intended for the player to feel small and give them a sense of wonder about their surroundings, all along with creating an emotional relationship with an unknown companion on co-op mode. Let's talk about Journey's design. I'm gonna be honest and say that I have never heard of that game company, or Flow, or Flower, up until Journey came out. And that was because the design just captured my attention. The main setting is a desert, and my god is it wondrous. I'm not really a big fan of the desert. If you watch my Flower review, you know I'm more into the greenery scene. But this is just pulled off beautifully. The sand sparkles, the heat waves ripple, it's downright perfect. I like the design of the player character as well. Not having a definite name, your character is just called a hooded figure. Because that's pretty much what you are, a figure with a hood. You never see your face and it's even unknown if your character is even human. It could be an alien for all you know. There's also other creatures you meet along the way that seems to be floating pieces of cloth. But I swear, some of them actually act like animals like dolphins, whales, and even jellyfish. The monsters that attack you also have cool designs. They kind of remind me of leviathans. If anything, the game is simply beautiful to look at. I never get tired of seeing the art inspired by it. Time to look at gameplay. This time, the controls are way different than flows and flowers. The only time you use the motion controls and the controller is when you turn the camera angle, which honestly can get really annoying at times. Get the wrong way! Your main control is to move around with a left analog stick. You can press X to fly and float, but only if your headscarf is at full power. To power up your headscarves, you press circle around other cloths. This will power up your scarf and or help you reach higher locations. The square can also be used for a small communication side co-op mode. Speaking of co-op mode, it's probably one of the game's best features. Besides helping each other and powering up your headscarves, there's not else much you can do besides play through together. But for some reason, you form a close bond with this unknown companion. Since there isn't any fighting of the sort, there's something strangely bonding about hiding from giant monsters while they search for you and your fellow journeymen. You don't know who they are, and the only way of communicating with each other is these small chirps that you can make. And the only thing you can think of in this huge environment that you're in is, hey, there's another person. Now on to score. Like Flower, Journey is a very nice, calming soundtrack. I never get tired of hearing that opening song. was composed by Austin Wintory. In-game, however, there's certain moments that you don't really hear the music that much. Mostly due to the fact that, well, you're just looking at the design still. Though there are some moments when the music overbears the design, like vice versa. It knows where and when to focus on what, and even in the last level it somehow manages to pull off both at the same time. The ending song called I Was Born For This was sung in Latin by Elizabeth Scott. Sadly, the other songs don't really stick out as much as this one does. Last but not least, the story. This story absolutely blows my mind. I mean, I can't imagine anything so simple being so powerful at the same time. Basically, you begin in the desert. Literally, you don't know how you got there. All you see is this mountain peak in the distance, and upon beginning to follow it, your journey begins. As you come in contact with more and more of the ruins of a past civilization, it almost feels like you're solving a mystery. After you complete each level, you are sent to some kind of spiritual world where you meet a very large, white-hooded figure who shows you, little by little, about their lost civilization, and what your player's character's role in the story is. I love watching these cutscenes. None of it is in dialogue, it is literally all shown to you. And even though the hooded figures only have glowing eyes and no other facial features, sometimes you can just imagine what these characters are thinking, especially in this scene. It's like your character knows where this is going, and the bigger ones seem to be showing concern for you. I'd rather not spoil the ending, but let me just say, it's a tearjerker. The feels. <laughs> the feels. I love Journey as much as the next person, and the only real fault I can find with it is that it was just too short. It only takes about two or three hours to a complete playthrough. 
I know there's only so much you can do, and most people believe the length is perfect. But I just felt so wrapped up in this story and environment that I didn't want it to stop. This is definitely one of those games that stay with you, be it the music, the design, or just the story in general. I remember the scene where you're sliding down the castle walls. I actually dreamed of it later that night. I don't know why. The colors and the music and just the movements all went together so perfectly. It was amazing. But other than that, the game is so romantically designed and has such a classy story arc. I highly recommend it. Because of my length issues, I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. Still amazing though. Go check it out if you already haven't.